When you can't breathe, you can't scream. Here's your look at the new NECA toys, Aliens, Snake, Alien. Dark, empty, silent. This is deep space and vicious aliens are attacking. One force has the guns and the guts to face these ugly monsters. Send in the heavy metal, send in the space marines. Never in a million years did I ever think we'd be looking at a snake alien from the folks over at NECA Toys. And yet, here we are. We're here. Long journey. From the bottom to the very top of the snake alien, the Ultra Measuretron 5000 tells us that the figure stands 8.2 inches. Uh, of course, results may vary depending on how you've got the coiled tail. I'll talk about that in a second. But at a standing stable stance, a lot of S's, you're looking at 8.2 inches. Mileage may vary. Centimeters, uh, centimeters, you're looking at a 21 centimeter tall alien. For some size comparisons, my friends, members of the mob, uh, here he is, here it is, next to the scorpion alien. Oh, I love this, love this figure so much. Uh, now again, mileage may vary. Just currently, this is the stance that I had him just on my display shelf. Uh, but you can see the two figures so drastically different from one another. Obviously, this one here, the one on the left, the scorpion alien, is a little bit more to the traditional sense of what a xenomorph actually looks like. The snake alien, though, well, geez, that one is completely different. A vast, different sort of beast. It's one lone accessory, is technically, if you want to count this as an accessory, is the Aliens Snake Alien Night Strike comic. An actual passage, uh, a part, if you will, of the Dark Horse comics, Alien vs. Predator. So you can see in here is, uh, once again, a snippet, a snippet that has some semblance to whatever the character, in this case, the Xenomorph we have in question. I think this is actually the bull alien there, but if we continue to flip our way through, flip through the pages, uh, we have some introduction of some characters, and oh, lo and behold, what have we got there? Well, we've got ourselves the snake alien wrapped around the trunk of a tree. Continuing on the pages, uh, once again, you can... I think this is, is this Drake? I think this is Drake all dressed up here. I hope again we future, will get a future rendition of this from the folks over at NECA Toys. And then again, as we continue to go through the passages, uh, then we've got uh, the, I believe this is the queen alien right at the top there, the flying queen alien. Also something that Kenner released back in the day. So let's all gather together, gather around the campfire and marvel at the fact that we've got ourselves finally a snake alien. I had owned this back in the day, the Kenner release of this. And I have to admit, like the NECA version of this is pretty faithful to the original. Let me just bring, bring the camera back a little bit. Obviously the primary sell of this is the fact that most of the, most of the species, this version of the Xenomorph is tail. Most of it is. Pretty much even from the figure standpoint, the tail starts here. If you were to, of course, exclude the sort of larger kind of... It even kind of looks like uh, a face hugger, just a, a multiple appendage face hugger, making up the top section of the figure. But like all the rest of it really is just the coils of its tail. You could probably be very quick to guess how this all comes about and you probably would be correct, it's a wire frame. And if you extend out everything, this is probably not gonna be how I'm gonna display the figure. This is how long the figure stands or figure's length is. And again, just kind of putting my hands to it, it's about three and a half feet in length. Now, I don't know if you will likely want to display your figure like this. I mean, obviously, standing is going to be a bit of a problematic issue. And luckily, because this is one long frame, from here to here is one long, continuous wire frame. Again, you can manipulate the snake alien to the desired look that you want. And actually, you know, it does a pretty good job once you get it stable enough to balance on itself, even to the point where it's it's hovering. I don't know if you can see that if I just kind of put my finger underneath there, hovering above the flooring 
it does still stand stable. It's probably the most logical route that NECA could have given us for making a updated take on the snake alien. It can't really get overly complicated. I mean, ball joints, you could put that all into the mix. But really, at the end of the day, wireframe really is the best way to go. Let's have a look at its head. Uh, a very different take on its head. Uh, it has these almost predator-like mandibles located on the sides. Now these are hinges, something of which that can be moved up and down. And uh, you can also rotate these all the way around. I don't really know why you'd want to. I, I kind of actually dig the fact that they, they are up like this. Kind of gives you almost like a devil sort of alien. But I think primarily you may want to just have them facing downward. Coloring is almost akin to something I would expect like from the Joker. A lot of greens, a lot of purples, and of course the introduction there of this copperish gold that makes up the top crest section. Very much akin to something that we would get from the Aliens movie with these additional little spikes sticking out. All the diff different molds, the different textures that they put into this mold, it's just fantastic. I love the internal workings of this. Kind of also reminds me of like the mouth from the Blade 2 uh, vampires. Again, I'm just like pulling all this source material out. Kind of also looks a little bit like the Creeper from Jeepers Creepers. All these scales and fanned out fins uh, extended now and ending their journeys with these individual appendages. Like these little claws, much like these mandibles on the sides of its mouth, each of which, each of which can rotate. I don't know if you can see them or not, but there's a hinge happening on each one of these. And uh, they will increase and decrease in size. Uh, they don't seem like they are all, well, possibly they are all the same mold. They did look like they were a little bit bigger at the top, but it does look like they are the exact same mold carrying their way all the way down. Love the slicked nature that they've added the sheen to the interior section. Sort of like the fanned crest of a King Cobra. I don't know why, again, I'm just looking at it and it screams Joker to me. Not that there really needed a lot of reasoning for me to ev ever think Joker, because one Joker is one of my, by far one of my favorite bat villains. Getting sidetracked right here. You can see this great overbite of this outer jaw. And what's neat about it is you can drop the jaw down like that, and you can bring out this whole mid jaw section. Again, a departure from what we would normally expect with alien figures. Normally, you, of course, get this little small jaw, but you never really get a case where you've got this elongated bottom jaw that makes up the smaller mouth inside. It's, again, a really nice way just to add to a, an already neat-looking figure. Gives you some extra options for how you want to display it as well. Uh, this just pushes back in. That's as far in as it goes. And then almost these saber tooth like teeth can close up shop. And I love the fact that they stick up the way that they do. No visible eyes anywhere found on the, the uh, snake alien here. Pretty much again, like any other xenomorph, it has no visible sight eyes. Uh, something again, it probably relies more on sensory than anything else. Love the silver that they added to the teeth. The, the, the metallic purple is just exquisite. I love how, again, you've got the green, You've got the purple, and you've got this copper gold, just making up. I love also for the fact that the front section stays really away from the idea of gold. Gold only really makes its way onto the top crest of the head. And then all the back section is a combination of the dark blacks and the gold. This copper's gold, again, you can see the individual veins running out from the center spine as it continues its way down to the coils of the tail. Now, posability on this one is a little on the unique side. As we've already looked at it, the mandibles, these little tendrils sticking out from its mouth, can rotate all the way around. And you can also hinge them back and forth. This technically is a posable part of the figure. This does hinge out, and this also does retract, if you want to count that as well. The only thing I really wish this one figure could have potentially possessed, that's a whole lot of peas, you spin the figure around, there's a visible hinge right there where you can tilt the head back. Likely this be a case that if you also wanted to pose this figure in a sort of a neat sort of 
almost scorpion-like pose, where now you've got this as a stinging weapon. Uh, you can display it like this, and you can bring these legs down. One possible means, and I'm sure this was the case as to why NECA Toys sculpted this the way that they did, so that you could bring these legs around, just kind of making them almost visibly like legs, and then you could have it be something that scurries along the ground, not necessarily coiling its way. Again, I love the fact that that could curl around thing, and sting whatever it's fighting. Uh, so these all are individually hinged. Like I said, you've got one, two, three, four, five, and six times two. That's 12. Simple math plus the two on the top. That's technically 14. So this does hinge back. But I find I wish that this hinge also was a little higher up here so that when you brought the head forward, it only goes to that point. Would love if the head had tilted even further forward so you could have got the head to angle like this. Small, a very small gripe. This does have a swivel point right here where you can swivel the tail as being a separate piece from the rest of its torso. And then as we've already discussed, this is a wire frame. So this is entirely up to you, depending on how you want to have it displayed, which way you want to display the tail. Like I said, if you get it in just the right, just the right treatment, it does want to lean a little bit, but if you counterbalance it with the way the tail is curled, the snake alien stands perfectly fine. Two modes technically for how you want to display it. The upright probably will be the go-to for most displayers, most collectors who will be likely picking up this figure for themselves. But I also kind of dig the idea of having it also on its multiple legs if you want to really consider these legs. And the stinger tail being something that can sweep around almost in the same way as the scorpion alien and be something that could sting. No budget was spent on that sound effect that actually came from my mouth. Either way though, a really nice release a surprising release from the folks over at NECA Toys. For any company that really wants to argue the point, well, we have to reuse molds. We want to get the most out of our molds as we possibly can. Take Exhibit S. That would be S for Snake Alien, a figure that, for all intents and purposes, NECA really won't be able to reuse in any shape or form unless they can find a clever way to make use of the opened crest here in the body and the snake tail. Maybe the tail they can make use for the Alien Queen. Either way, though, a really nice release, something I really was never expecting to get. For all the times that we've gotten ourselves quote-unquote Kenner-inspired figures from NECA, the one figure I really didn't think they'd ever release, in all honesty, was the Snake Alien. And yet, the proof is in the pudding. The last several minutes of us having a look at this figure, you can see that NECA has done it. And they've done it very, very well. The coloring on this guy works especially well. Don't get me wrong, the mold is fantastic. But adding that additional slime green on the underbelly of the snake, while keeping the gold being the coloring more on the external, I really think it works quite well. I don't know why I'm getting the vibe of Joker. Certainly not from the backside, but from the front side, it does look a little bit like a Joker alien. I know, I'm just thinking about the Joker all the time. Either way, some good news if you guys are interested in picking this one up for yourself. The Snake Alien, the Scorpion Alien are both available in comic book stores right now if you are interested in picking this one up for yourself. Let's not also forget this is the not the first rodeo, I think that's what they say, for NECA Toys releasing Kenner-inspired aliens. They've done a whole slew of them before, and we've had a look at them on this channel. So feel free to go back and have a look. I've got a playlist called NECA Figure Reviews, or also Alien Reviews. So if you want to check out some of the stuff that I've done before, feel free to have a gander. Did you just say gander? I did say gander. Have a gander at my playlist. Check out all the previous reviews I've done on these really neat Kenner-inspired alien figures. Uh, make sure as well you hit that little subscribe button down below. That is crucial, because certainly more videos as they come to this channel, you don't want to be that kid on the street that says, Review Spot just released a new video? I didn't know he did. And then everybody on the street laughs at you and says, there's no way this guy, you, you want to invite this guy to your house? I certainly don't now. Make sure you hit that little subscribe button down below. Don't be the only kid on the street that hasn't subscribed to this channel. As always, guys, thanks for watching, as you always do. And I'll see you guys next time.